Doug, you were the uh, one of the first to kind of break this Rob Mercer news, both on the initial news of, of him trying to get to the main event and now this uh, this scandal that is starting to unfold. I guess just tell us a little bit about how at the beginning, how you were introduced to Rob and his story and the steps that you took to, to bring it to light. Yeah, I mean, actually, I was going through it last night. He deleted his Twitter and scrubbed his tweets. But first time I've ever learned about Rob Mercer was February of this year. And it was this tweet saying it was on an Alan Kessler response. They were talking about, I'm not sure if you're aware of the other like scandal, Jamie LaFay and GoFundMe, which we don't need to get into. But he uh, he was talking on that thread with Alan Kessler. He said something to the fact of, um, you know, I have something. Oh, here it is. It says, yo, Alan, this is the first time I ever seen Rob Mercer tweet. It says, yo, Alan, I have cancer too. And mine is actually terminal. I have six months to a year left to live. How much do you think I can pull together from the community to live my dream? Or does this only work for women? That was the first tweet I ever saw. I responded back because I looked. He lives in Vallejo. I live in Martinez. So he lives about 15 minutes from me. And I don't know. I just was compelled to, you know, I looked at another tweet of his. And it was something about stage four. I felt compelled to help him. So I reached out and said, hey, um, if you ever want to uh, play a few buy-ins on me, let me know at Thunder Valley. That's like the local casino that we all all the major tournament stops come to. So he responded back in February and said, I'm really sick right now. I appreciate the thought though. That was it. And I mean, I might've stayed in a couple tweets to him like here and there, but it was like less than two. Flash forward to the beginning of June of this year. And he said, back, back then, this is also important. Back then I had 50 followers and I barely used Twitter. Um, Flash forward to June and I, because of uh, Twitter spaces, I had like a somewhat of a buzz and he saw that and reached out and said, Hey, um, congrats on like the Twitter spaces success lately. Do you think that, um, I said, yeah, I remember you mentioning something back in February about helping me out. How about instead of sending me money, could you uh, help me get my GoFundMe out there? I said, no problem. And I reached out and I, I retweeted it. I, um, I reached out to all my connections that I have. I called Nick Bertucci, a couple other people. They were on board, helped, helped spread the word. Um, do you want me to, you want me to like go through the whole timeline or you just want to know how he, how I, uh, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's, 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 uh, go through the whole thing. Yeah, sure. So, so it was that I called Nick when he contacted me, his GoFundMe had like 700 bucks or something. It was a couple other poker players. I called Nick and I and I, I said, hey man, this, you know, I you know, I never really asked you for anything, but this, it would be kind of cool if you could maybe retweet it or or maybe, you know, put up some money. And, and he said, I'll take a look at it, I promise you. That night he happened to hop on a Twitter space where Rob Mercer was in, because we had all kind of started talking about him that week. He was getting involved with Twitter spaces and Nick felt compelled and said, Hey. I'll retweet it. I will do everything I can to help you get to play the main. And then within two days, it went from 800 to the 12,000, I think, or 15,000. It's kind of overwhelming. And, and everyone was like, wow, um, this is amazing. Now, I should have vetted him in the beginning, but I've never dealt with something like this. And I don't know, I, it just feels weird asking someone that you think is actually dying for proof. So yeah, before why would yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. Like, why would you? And and then um, this is where the other person gets involved. I think before Nick would do that, he did a telethon for him or some, something to that effect for him and Cody. And before he had him on there, I think he wanted to kind of like see proof or something. And Ash Kardash, I'm sure you're familiar with, it goes on HCL streams. I'm not sure to this point. I mean, people are asking me this. This is the one thing I don't know. I'm not sure how she became the person that he sent it to. So he sends the proof and we asked, I asked her straight up, hey, you know, I believe it, but like, have you seen, oh yeah, completely, her words are something to the effect of like, uh, completely cleared. He, he, he has it. He has, he has what he says he has. He has stage four colon cancer. And I said, okay. And this was, I mean, this was Ash Kardashian, you said? Yeah, this was Ash Kardashian. And this was about, this was like early June, I believe, maybe mid June. So, you know, Nick has the telethon. We were all going off that. A couple of trolls would come in with, you know, like, oh, where's your proof? If Jamie, you know, hasn't had to show her proof and all this stuff. So we would say, hey, look, we've seen the proof, you know, or 
someone's vetted the proof. And so that we were going off of that. It was a bad game of telephone because we had all under the assumption that 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 was proof. And, you know, everything was good. He was a humble, nice kid back then. No red flags whatsoever. Flash forward to uh, the main event and I started to get some text and rumblings. He was seen, um, you know, he was in the pits a lot, which I told people that would call me on this, like, hey, are you sure? Like, look, man, he could be dying and a degenerate. Like, who are we to judge? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, it's not like they're mutually exclusive. He's not a degenerate and or someone with cancer, yeah. but it kind of kind of grew with that. And then he he um, he went to dinner with Alan Keating and he left the dinner early and said, I'm very sick. This was like the first time he was kind of caught in a little bit of a lie. He told him he was sick. He had to go home because they were going to do a meetup game or some something to that fact. And Alan said, no worries. This was confirmed last night. I had a call with Nick. He left. He was also supposed to meet up with Blank Check Ben that night, who was a big, big donor. He said he was too sick. Flash forward to an hour and a half later, and and, and uh, Ben and a couple other people caught him in the pits, and he was literally multi-table, and he was playing dice, and he was like going back and playing, uh, I think it's called Caribbean Stud or, or something like that. So he was playing multi-table games, like a big amount, max betting. And Ben kind of called him out and said, hey, man, I'm not telling you what to do, but that is bad optics for people that have donated. And he's like, oh, this is my money, you know, whatever he, he had some a bunch of excuses and then that was it he played the main he busted he got very uh he was very con confrontational on twitter you know I'm, I'm these are all these flags that i'm seeing and he's telling people on twitter that oh I'll, you know i'll fly to where you're at and fight you and i'm just like man is it is this really how someone that is dying would act like maybe he's just lashing out so i just kind of all these things were in the back of my head and then he gets back or he gets back to his hotel room and he met up with the journalist that day, Las Vegas journalist. His name is David, uh, some with an S. He meets up with him. Um, he does a little piece on him. And the journalist asked, you know, uh, oh, where's your dad at? And he, he made up some excuse, which was different from what he told other people. So the journalist knows this. He goes back to his hotel room and he was supposed to meet up with someone that night with his dad. This is when I think Nick called me or someone else, I forget. And he said, hey, this is kind of a weird thing. He's saying his dad left five days prematurely. Um, he's saying his dad got drunk and ruined the suite. Okay, so I was like, that doesn't, dad's leaving his kid on his last trip? Like, all right. So that was the only red flag at the time. Just kind of remember it. He gets back. Um, I start a home game online just for Twitter spaces, people that I know. And I got him in there. He immediately asked me to put him in a few. I did, you know, a couple hundred bucks, two, three hundred bucks I spent on him. And then he kept asking to the point where I said, hey, Rob, you know, I'm kind of on a bit of a downswing here. Like, I will when I can, but this is kind of the it for now. He's like, okay. He won one and he was snap asking to get the money out. Just very addicted behavior. You know, like either had an addiction or he was a gender. And I'm keep thinking like, man, this guy is, is, he's changed a lot. So when I first, you know, tweeted me, I got a couple of donors that called me and said, look, I don't think he has cancer. Like, honestly believe he's scamming us. And can you look into it? I was like, sure. You know, I kind of got the same feeling. Now this is, this is four or five weeks ago when I first really was like, okay, I'm going to start looking into this, you know, because this should have been vetted, but I'm going to, I'm going to look more into this. So there was some other behaviors online and anytime someone would ask him about cancer, he'd be very vague. Um, I reached out to him, you know, just had a casual conversation. And then three weeks ago is when I pretty much knew that he had, he had scammed us. I, I contacted Ash and I said, Hey, um, can you send me the proof? I was like, I won't share this with anyone. Can you send me the proof of Rob, you know, his cancer? And she goes, oh, okay, yeah, sure. And she's like, is there something up? And I'm like, uh, just, I just want to make sure before people are asking me if I've actually seen it and I don't want to lie to them. So he, she sends me the proof. And I, when I looked at it, I immediately knew he scammed us. Uh, I was like, is this it? And she said, she goes, oh my God, it is sus now that I think about it. This is all I have. I'm not sure if you've seen what that is, but it's just a screenshot of him messaging his doctor saying, hey, Dr. W, um, can you send me my cancer uh, di diagnosis or something? It's not even the doctor's response. <laughs> and right above it, because I use my chart, right above it, it says test results. So 
anything out of the last 20, 30 years, he could have clicked and had that, right? So right then I knew, but I had to, I had to, I had to do some more digging. I can't just go off of that, right? So that was the first, about three weeks ago. Um, he had some other red flags as far as degeneracy. People were saying, look, dude, look at his Instagram. He's like, he's playing slots every day. And I'm like, okay. And then I noticed when in February, he said he had six to 12 months to live. Okay. So right now we're at like six or seven months and he is very heavy, you know, and I'm thinking, look, I had a friend, close friend pass away from stage four colon cancer this year. He lost 180 pounds the last three months and Rob gained weight. And I'm like, okay. And his excuse was, oh, well, I'm not doing traditional medicine. I'm not doing chemo. And I'm thinking, well, okay. I don't know about that. Maybe that's true. It's just something I thought about. And I finally, four days ago, I finally was like, I was getting pressure from people like, dude, I don't think he's, he has it. And then someone sent me a text message. This was a guy that donated. This is a good friend of mine. He donated $4,000 to Rob off of GoFundMe. He just cash gapped him. Rob that night, according to him, he won another 6,000 in table games. So he has 10,000 disposable cash in 36 hours. He texted my friend and said, I have zero money and I don't have a way home. And I was like, what the hell? So he showed me that a couple of days ago, right? And I'm like, okay, there's too many flags here. I, got, I have to ask. And I reached out to him and I said, as very gentle, as gently as I could, I've done a lot for this kid. You know, I, I don't think he gets the money raised if I don't reach out to the people I did. So I felt like he would be like, oh, of course, Doug, let me give you, you know, let me give it to you. You know, no one else maybe could have asked him. And I felt like I could. I said, Rob, you know, this is very hard to do. Uh, you know, I'm not questioning you. I just, you know, there's a couple big donors that have asked if, if I've seen proof and I'm not going to lie to them. I believe you, but I'm going to need to see proof myself. I can't lie to them. And this is the only part where I actually lied to Rob because I realized that he's very invested in money. And I said, there is someone in Sacramento that will buy you into a few tournaments if, if I've seen proof. I thought that would maybe give him some motivation. And if he would have sent it to me, I was going to cover that, right? It was only going to be like a thousand or two thousand. He immediately got defensive. Um, he said, what the fuck? I deserve the right to know. You know, you're like my brother. Mind you, I've never even spoken to this guy on the phone or anything, you know, and he's just saying all this stuff. I'm like, Rob, man, I didn't say you had to send it to me, but you know, it's, it's very tough because I haven't seen proof. This is where he screwed up. This is where I officially knew I had him. Three months ago, he sent that proof to Ash Kardashian. It's a screenshot of the doctor, him just asking for it. When he sent me proof, he sent that day, four days ago, the same thing saying that I'm asking the doctor right now. I will know in a few days. And I got sick in my stomach and I said, hey, and then he goes off about stuff I didn't ask about, like saying, oh, well, Nick didn't donate. Just a bunch of very, just, just shit that didn't even matter. And I'm just thinking, I'm looking at this. While I'm reading this, I'm seeing tweet uh, DMs deleted. And I'm like, how is he doing that? And I'm like looking. So I, I really quickly screen grabbed them all. And he went live on a space while I was doing that. He cried to them and he basically said, I'm no longer going to be friends with Doug. He is harassing me for proof. And everyone felt sorry for him because they didn't know what I knew. And I'm getting calls and DMs from people. You got to come in here. Your reputation is at risk. Like, and I'm just sitting back. I'm like, nah, I'm going to let him, I'm going to let him bury himself. And he went on there. He got caught in a few lies and then he snap deleted his Twitter. Um, I went on his Instagram. He limited the comments, which is now deleted. And he did the same on Facebook all within a few hours. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm talking with the journalist who's going to run some pieces um, with an update. And, you know, it, it's it's just wild how much money this guy got. And, and he just disappeared. And, and you know, it's, it's insane. It's insane that I should have vetted that proof from the beginning. You know, that's the one thing that I have regrets about. So um, well, there's a let bunch me, of... Let me stop you there just for a second. Yeah. It, I, I don't think you need to, to feel bad about what you did or, or anything like that. I, I think anyone in your shoes would see a kid that is claiming he has cancer and is on his, his last wish. And you, you, you out of the kindness of your heart, you, you did what you could to help him. There's, there's no reason for you to believe someone would lie about something like that. Yeah. Um. So I just, just as man to man, like seriously. And, and then even for you to be doing all this to, 
to right what right whatever wrongs you think you did it's it's very honorable and and there's no reason for you to regret anything you did you uh just from this conversation like i said you seem like a very kind person i appreciate that yeah i mean that that was the thing you know i felt like it was my duty to like i kind of brought him into the community quote unquote you know he he no one was retweeting his stuff and no one knew him and i i just felt like you know what this would be a good deed to use for my you know uh, newfound like twitter space thing and i was like you know what I'm, this is going to be something i'm going to help out that's why i felt like a duty like okay i might have made a mistake not betting that but we're going to make sure that I know if this guy has it or not. And I did it as soon as I could, you know, it's, it's the whole thing is super wild. Um, so have you had any, any contact with Rob outside of uh, what you just told us from when, before he went on that Twitter rant? Uh, I had, I got his number from my buddy who sent him some money. Uh, he, he blocked me. There's only one person who's uh, gotten contact with him. And it's, um, uh, she wants to, he or she wants to remain anonymous. And, she was kind of close with him throughout this all given him that's the other thing this isn't just monetary the twitter spaces community is is kind of a uh, especially in the poker twitter it's a, you see a lot of the same people and i've gotten to know a lot of them it's kind of like a very small knit uh group of friends we spent hours hearing this guy cry, giving him advice. You know, uh, Josh Macchiello, who's, you know, good friends with Nick Fertucci, he's played on some streams. He signed him up and was sending him $1,000 worth of CBD and other minerals and shit to try to help this guy. Like, it goes really deep. That's why it was very sickening for all of us. And one person has been able to get in contact with him. And the only reason why is because this person was going to all of uh, Rob's friends in real life and like saying hey do you know anything about this and, and he got wind of that um, that's another thing he never mentioned cancer or this gofundme on his on his instagram or facebook so he basically i mean i could send you the screenshots too he he basically responds and he says it's disgust it's a very long thing and i can send that to you but just the skim of it is is it's disgusting that people are calling me a scammer i do have scammer or I, I, i'm not a scammer i do have cancer i i got diagnosed last july that he caught in a lie because he's told us all and we've seen on twitter he got diagnosed 2022 of September. That's like when he told us he got diagnosed. And this message he's saying July. He walked out of that day with zero paperwork. <laughs> and um, he said, I'm not going to do any of your treatments. I'll fight it on my own. He hasn't talked to that doctor since, he said. This is in the message. So he hasn't talked to his cancer doctor. Um, basically, that's all that's, that's kind of all he said. It's a bunch of nonsense about how fuck everyone if they don't believe me. And basically, he's going to die in a few months. And um, He's not going to come back on any social media. You know, that was the, that was another lie I caught him in. He he said he's been in contact with his cancer doctor. Here he says he hasn't. But I looked it up. The doctor was a, not a cancer doctor. It was, a, it was a family practitioner. And that doctor has been closed since 2021. So it looks like he was his old doctor, you know. So that was a ghost effectively. That's Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's wild. That was the only uh, contact anyone's had since then. He's blocked everyone. And I'm talking people that have sent a lot of money or, or have tried to help him in other ways. What's up, Kitty? So, yeah, that's the only contact we have with him right now because he blocks everybody who even reaches out. I'm like, Rob, you you could talk to me if you need help. And the whole thing is very sad. Crazy. So no one's been able to get really any kind of contact from him outside of that long message? No, the journalist has tried to, even Cody Daniels. Who I'm sure you know the story yeah. of. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the one regret I have because um, I've talked with him for a few hours, you know, and I told him he is what we thought Rob was, you know. And the worst part of this, oh, that's that's the sickest part. I left this part out. This is very important. Rob bust the main, and I have on pretty good authority to think that he oversold in the 200 to 300 percent range. So we think he busted on purpose and triple dipped, right? Don't have for sure proof on that yet, but there's some good good dms going back and forth i'm trying to do the numbers on that it looks like he oversold he busts the main he pretends that he's sick and going back to the hotel room he rips off his mask and goes and jumps in a 10 20 40 game at the bellagio um and punts off like 8k right after busting the main he cries to it to cody not that he busts in the 2020 
10, 20, 40 game. We just found that out after. And Cody, out of the kindness of his heart, because he was still in the main, says, Rob, I'm going to give you a free 10% sweat. Rob, Cody busts the main, and Rob is literally waiting at the cage for him. I That part fucked me up, because like, yeah, he scammed all of us, but dude, you're scamming the guy that you know was actually dying, and he took 3000 3000 from him. Sorry, 2500 He gave him a $500 discount. So he took 2500 from Cody. That's sick. That's sick part. That's awful. That's absolutely yeah. awful. I mean, the yeah. last part is, <clears throat> the last part I'll say is, I'm trying to get everyone's money back. So I know GoFundMe does a, um, there is some sort of uh, retribution on that. And so I've emailed them and I've emailed, um, I mean, I really think this guy needs to pay for this consequences. And I emailed the local FBI office in our area. So I'm trying to figure out what we can do to hold the guy accountable, you know? So that's kind of the last thing, but I will send you all that right now. That's awesome. And again, Doug, seriously, man, I can tell this is, this is eating you up. You're, I mean, even to be this actionable, uh, both ways, again, in the beginning, out of the kindness of your heart, just giving this guy a platform. Because again, why would you think that he's yeah. lying about cancer? And then now on, on the back end of it, when things are coming to light, you seem to be at the forefront of this, uh, of uncovering the truth and, and trying to, to right the wrong. So again, it's very admirable, very honorable. Uh, you really should not feel bad about yourself at all. I appreciate that. It was very kind of you.